I'm Dr. Vaishali Barambe. I've been teaching anatomy for more than 25 years and I love it. This lecture is a part of my central nervous system series where I'm going to discuss development of spinal cord. Okay? There are a lot of other lectures that uh, I have taken on spinal cord. I want you to go through all of them, especially the PG entrance uh, MCQ series so that after you gain knowledge, you learn how to solve problems as well. The links for all are obviously given in the description section. So let's begin with development of spinal cord. How did this spinal cord really begin and form? For this, I want you to ask yourself how to start this. Always remember, start with neurulation. What is neurulation? I think you know. Anyway, I'm going to take you through it. So basically, neurulation is the method by which we created neural tube and neural crest cells. Right? So, let's begin with looking at the epiblast. This is a bilaminar embryo. Okay? You are looking at it from the top. Okay? You can see that this is the epiblast layer. Below that on the other side would be the hypoblast layer. And this is the primitive streak. If you recall, primitive streak is the linear streak through which epiblast cells will go down and create the intraembryonic mesoderm. Let's go to the next stage where the disc has enlarged in size. Okay. This is epiblast primitive streak. From the apex of the primitive streak, cells have gone down and forward, creating what is called as notochord. Right? So, notochord is between the epiblast or ectoderm and underlying endoderm. And the cell layers which is lying above the notochord now thicken to form the neural plate. So, let us put this in a sentence. Neuroectodermal cells in the center of the epiblast thicken to form the neural plate. I want you to focus on this orange cells. Baki sa bhul jau. Just remember these orange cells. Now, let us see what happens. Okay, just to pause for a minute. Remember students that I am going to give you some theory on the left side on my screen. You are not supposed to, you know, I, I do not ever read. Uh, on, on whatever is given in my PPT. It is kept for you in case you want to use my PowerPoint as a, a note. Okay, You can pause and note down these notes. Right. So, what am I seeing on the screen now? I can see that this is a trilaminar embryo. That is the ectoderm, that is the endoderm and this in between obviously is the mesoderm. Here in the center of the mesoderm is the notochord. And these are the very group of cells, we just which discussed that. Okay? So, the cells lying above the notochord thicken to form the neural plate. So, what have I got? I have got a neural plate, I have got a notochord lying below it. Now, what happens? In the next stage, this same neural plate now begins to get depressed. Suppose this was your neural plate, Okay, it now begins to get depressed. As it gets depressed, it creates two folds on the side, which are called as neural folds. And cells adjacent to the neural folds are called neural crest cells. Take a look. So, that is the neural groove or the depression. These are the neural folds. You can see them on both the sides. And just the cells adjacent to them are called neural crest cells. Okay? These are three things you have to put in your brain. You can't afford to forget. So, what happened? There was formation of a neural plate. Do this please. I want you to create an action memory for yourself. Neural plate, neural groove, neural folds and neural crest cells. Got it? Okay. Now, what happens? Okay. So again, I, like I said, theory will be there for you to read. So, oh my god, where is the neural plate? Here you can see that the two edges of the neural plate, okay, this was the neural plate, the two edges have now fused together to form a neural tube and the two neural crest cells have separated out. So, in the center you can see the neural tube and on the side dorsolaterally you can see the neural crest, okay. But whatever is happening is something you need to understand well, okay. So, now take something like a post-it, okay. Pretend that this is your um, neural plate. 
and these are the edges of the neural plate which have formed this kind of a neural groove okay so that's the neural groove here are the neural uh, folds hmm? now what happens the neural folds begin to come closer together and they meet in the midline and they fuse that's tube right but can you see that anteriorly and posteriorly the tube is still open this anterior and posterior opening is called as neuropore anterior neuropore posterior neuropore this is an activity i want you to carry out to understand the concept of how the neural tube fuses first in the middle and later anteriorly and posteriorly it's not like it's going to remain open no it's going to fuse but anteriorly it will fuse at some point posteriorly it will fuse at some time and then finally one complete tube will be formed so use this activity it will help you to understand better so anterior neuropore will close in the middle of fourth week and the posterior neuropore at the end of fourth week of intrauterine life what do i have now i've got a neural plate i've got neural crest cells but what else is happening to the, what about the surface ectoderm the surface ectoderm remember which had developed the thickening once these structures depress down into the mesoderm surface ectoderm fuses to form one complete surface what about neural crest cells neural crest cells come to lie dorsolaterally they have their own development and that's a different chapter altogether now what do we have at the end of neurulation i've got neural tube i've got neural crest cells see here are your neural crest cells and here is your neural tube which is now shaped like this it has a cranial expanded end it has a caudal narrow tubular end and that is what i have today from which i am going to have to produce a spinal cord is that clear neural crest cells you as students are going to study on your own i want you to focus on this narrow tubular caudal end of the neural tube right note that you will study the neural crest cell separately on your own let's develop a spinal cord understand that the cranial dilated and develops to form the brain the caudal narrow and develops to form the spinal cord how let's understand see ye to hai tube it's a tube so if you take a section of it it looks like this just a simple columnar epithelium layer of cells okay now what happens these cells begin to multiply at a crazy pace they multiply and they multiply and they begin to migrate outside multiply karo bahar jao multiply karo bahar jao okay so finally what happens is that from one layer there are three layers formed okay you can see one original layer and two more layers are found outside that these layers are called ependymal layer mantle layer and marginal layer marginal is the one which is most outside margin hmm? so ependymal cells from the ependymal zone have migrated out into the mantle zone have migrated out into the marginal zone creating three layers okay so now let's talk about each of them ependymal layer kya karta hai ependymal layer actually gives rise to neuroblasts and spongioblast blast is always an immature cell right so it gives rise to neuroblast and spongioblast which will migrate into the mantle zone okay so whatever is left will stay there forming a layer of simple columnar uh, epithelium with microvilli and it will form the ependymal lining of the central canal producing csf okay did you see that this is the ependymal final layer that gets formed outside that the mantle zone meanwhile is receiving neuroblasts and receiving spongioblasts right so those neuroblasts now produce neurons that's how your neurons are formed and those spongioblasts are supporting those neurons they form astrocytes they form oligodendrocytes okay so now your mantle zone is consisting of neuroblasts is equal to neurons spongioblasts is equal to astrocytes and oligodendrocytes what about the marginal zone the marginal zone also contains spongioblasts which will become neuroglia but it contains axons 
of the neuroblast see you remember yahan pe over here we produced neurons the axons of these neurons migrate out and pack up the the marginal zone this is how your marginal zone begin becomes packed with axons and neuroglial cells so now what do we know okay, we know ki mantle zone has got neurons and neuroglia we know marginal zone has got axons of neurons and neuroglia we know that ependymal layer contains cells which are going to line the central canal this is not really looking like a spinal cord right it's got three layers spinal cord looks something different now there's some more changes to happen when this growth takes place there is a limited growth happening at the top and the bottom the the anterior most part and the posterior most part do not grow as much as the growth is seen on the sides and thus there is a floor plate and a roof plate formed okay because there is no growth here and here there is only growth on the side parallelly what happens the ependymal layer begins to develop a sulcus in it i want you to note this sulcus here this is called sulcus limitans what is it called sulcus limitans and this now divides your mantle zone into two bunch of cells and anterior bunch of cells called basal lamina a posterior bunch of cells called alar lamina okay i have written motor and sensory for you to quickly note basal lamina develops motor neurons alar lamina develops sensory neurons what was the sulcus developed sulcus limitans converts the rounded central canal into diamond shaped structure okay basal lamina like i said develops into more structures which are motor in functioning when the alar lamina develops into structures which are sensory in functioning now some more changes occur okay so this is, can you see the diamond shaped central canal alar lamina alar lamina basal lamina and surrounding marginal zone now what happens the two edges of the ependymal layer begin to get pushed medially and they fuse resulting in development of the posterior median septum which is therefore ependymal in origin did you see suddenly your central canal got very much reduced in size okay it became more anterior and reduced in size parallelly your basal lamina begins to grow forwards okay on both the sides please see and how as it grows there's a deep fissure getting formed anteriorly called the anterior median fissure okay this is how your anterior median fissure is formed and the two gray horns of the anterior gray horn are formed finally the neurons that are formed in the basal gang lamina okay that's a neuron give rise to axons which begin to travel through the ventral root and reach the muscle as they all keep on exiting from the anterior gray horn they form the ventral root of spinal nerve similarly the alar lamina neurons are also formed they begin to so that's where the neurons are formed they get information from the periphery okay so there are axons from the outside which are coming in and relaying into these posterior gray horn neurons the axons of these neurons now travel outwards okay parallelly just note that this neuron here is a pseudo unipolar neuron just for your information so can you see that the axon of the neuron in posterior gray horn has traveled into the white matter and is now ascending up forming an ascending tract this is how ascending tracts are formed axons come in reach the posterior gray horn the posterior gray horn neuron analyzes its axon enters into white matter ascending upwards as the ascending tract so you can see how the marginal zone is now getting packed with axons note that the the peripheral process of the pseudo unipolar neuron lying here forms the posterior root the central process of it forms the rest of the dorsal root of spinal nerve okay just in case you wonder how that is formed more fibers are coming down from the cortex 
also lying in the marginal zone forming the descending tracts. This is how your marginal zone gets packed with ascending tracts which are exons of posterior grey horn or exons of the dorsal root ganglion or descending tracts which are exons coming from the cortex downwards. So, the final shape of the spinal cord is achieved with some modification of alar and basal lamina to look like the H shaped grey matter and the white matter now gets divided into anterior lateral and posterior funiculi and the spinal cord begins to resemble the spinal cord we know and love. Okay? Right. So, if this is the structure formed, what questions can I ask you? I can ask you, can you tell me the development of central canal? Yes, ependymal zone. Okay. What about posterior grey horn, alar lamina of mantle zone? What about anterior grey horn, basal lamina of mantle zone? What about white matter, marginal zone? What about ventral root, exons? of neurons lying in the anterior grey horn, posterior root exons of the dorsal root ganglion pseudo unipolar neurons. What about dorsal root? This is a very important question because we have not discussed it. The dorsal root consists of pseudo unipolar neurons which are developed from the neural crest cells. Okay. Right. So, now whatever exons are there, if they are lying inside CNS, they are coming from oligodendrocytes. If they are lying outside, then they are developing from uh, neural crest cells. A vertebral column initially is lying, uh, is the same length as the spinal cord, but later on the vertebral column grows much faster, spinal cord grows slowly and therefore, a tail of nerves come out from spinal cord trying to go down and exit out through their own vertib intervertebral foramen. This tail is called as corda equina. So, what do you see in this image? You can see the neural tube, notochord. What about the mesoderm? Can you see how mesoderm has got divided into paraxial mesoderm, intermediate mesoderm and the lateral plate mesoderm? This paraxial mesoderm itself gets divided into sclerotome, myotome, dermatome. I know you know all this, but you must be wondering, ma'am, why are you teaching us all this? It's too much. It's not too much, it's fun. Just listen. So, this sclerotome, okay, now, this is your paraxial mesoderm, and that's where the sclerotome lies. The cells of the sclerotome, no, they begin to come inwards, okay. Watch. Your neural tube has formed a spinal cord, okay, which is surrounded by three layers of meninges. These are your paraxial mesoderm and this is your notochord. Clear? Get this funda clear. That's your neural tube. These are the meninges which have developed around it. Neural tube has formed the spinal cord. So, call it the spinal cord. These are the paraxial mesoderm. This is the notochord. Pakka? Chal. What happens is paraxial mesoderm now gives rise to cells which begin to grow inwards and surround the notochord. These develop to form the body of a vertebra. Okay? They develop to form the body of a vertebra. Some cells also migrate backwards. Did you see how they migrated? And they form the vertebral arch as well as the spine of a vertebra neural arches and spinal vertebra. Some cells also migrate on the side resulting in development of the transverse process and the ribs if applicable. This is how a vertebra gets formed. Sclerotome migrating medially around notochord body. Migrating behind, uniting vertebral spine and neural arches. Migrating on the side, transverse process and the ribs. So, now what happens is that a vertebra gets formed. It comes to lie completely around the three meninges and the spinal cord. Again, you are wondering, ma'am, why? Why are you teaching us all this? I will tell you why I am teaching. What happens is that sometimes these developments do not take place as expected. And the condition that develops is called a spina bifida. This is actually a vertebral development disorder, which results in major neurological deficits for the child. 
So, these two do not fuse. So, spina becomes bifida. Okay? There is a non-fusion there, open spine. Let us take a look. So, you can see how here the neural arches have not got developed at all. They have not fused. You can see the dura mater is lying attached posteriorly. You can see the sp uh, spinal cord surrounded by pia arachnoid and CSF in between. This is what has happened in this person. There is no vertebral spine at all. Nothing to protect the spinal cord from behind. But the patient has no symptoms at all. What the patient you can see is that there is a tuft of hair on the posterior region of that patient. Very often in the lower lumbar region, you will just see a tuft of hair. Were you to go in and see, you would find the spinal cord lying open there. Just surrounded by meninges, not protected by vertebra. This is called spina bifida occulta. Occult. It is not openly seen. It is occult. Okay. Similarly, sometimes in a similar condition, the meninges pop out. Okay. Now, they are not lying in. The meninges bulge out. And you will find the child is born with a proper bulge in the back. Okay. This bulge is cystic. It is fluid containing. It is called meningocele or spina bifida cystica. Understand it. This is dura mater like last time. This is developing spinal cord. Surrounded by pia arachnoid which have now formed a swelling posteriorly. The swelling is called as a meningocele. Now, this is a serious condition. Were this to rupture, the patient's entire world, central nervous system is open. A third condition, even worse, is when the spinal cord decides to herniate out as well along with meninges. So, here is your dura, here is your developing spine, uh, spinal cord and here is your pia arachnoid with the, along with the developing spinal cord, it has herniated out resulting in development of something called meningomyelocele. Now, this is very dangerous. Okay? So, to understand this, we need to understand vertebral column development. That is why I taught you vertebral column. Basic concept, spina bifida. It can be spina bifida occulta, it can be spina bifida cystica. It can also be something called rachis chesis. That means the two sides of the neural tube. You remember neural groove? The neural groove has remained a neural groove only. It never fused. No neural tube formation has happened. Okay? Very, very poor survival or no survival for these cases. Okay? Now, I want you to think of one more situation where the, the paraxial mesoderm cells did not fuse anteriorly to form the body. So, there is a body which is formed in two bits. So, what happens is that there are two unfused parts of the body of vertebra, that is the dura mater, that is the spinal cord. The meninges around spinal cord herniate forward. Up tak humne kya dekha tha? They were herniating backwards. Now you see that they herniate forwards, resulting in anterior spina bifida. Okay, a bifid formation anteriorly. Most of these conditions that I taught you are diagnosed by ultrasonography even before the child's birth. Right, so let us revise what we learnt. We have learnt neurulation, formation of neural tube, neural crest cells. Then we talked about how the neural tube got divided into ependymal, mantle and marginal layer. Then we developed each of these layers, ependymal layer forming central canal, mantle layer forming grey matter and the marginal zone forming the white matter. We saw how the mantle layer formed the basal and alar lamina, basal developing into motor component, alar lamina developing into sensory component. Finally, we also discussed the development of any vertebra and how if the two neural arches do not fuse posteriorly, there is spina bifida and if they do not fuse anteriorly, there is anterior spina bifida. So, this is how understanding the, the spinal cord and the vertebral column kind of develop together okay? and their health is quite interdependent. These are all the lectures that I have carried out on spinal cord. I want you to go and see all of them. If you have any doubts, please feel free to call me. I will be more than happy to clarify your doubts. All the links are given in the description section. 
Students, if you are enjoying my lectures, do please let me know. Okay, I'll feel encouraged to produce more of these classes for you. Also, if you like this video, just share it with one friend. If you are enjoying this, let somebody else also learn from it. Okay, thank you. I love taking this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it too.